Hello, my name is Julia and today I'm going to tell you about concave up and concave down. So first of all, we need to determine what this concavity is. To do that, we need to know that the first derivatives tell us very useful information about the behavior of a function. They are used to determine if a function is increasing, decreasing or constant on a given interval. Now, you are probably already familiar with how to test if function is increasing, decreasing or constant. We can apply a very similar way of thinking to second derivatives. Like first derivatives, second derivatives also tell us useful information about the behavior of a function. You can find the second derivative usually denoted by f bis, by taking the derivative of the first derivative. To sum up, the first derivative can tell us where the function is increasing or decreasing, while the second derivative can tell us the shape of the graph. To be more specific, the second derivative tells us the concavity of a graph, whether the graph of f is concave up or concave downward. Here you can see the definition. So whenever the function is concave up, then the second derivative is positive, which also means that the first derivative is increasing. And when a function is concave down, it means that the second derivative is negative, which means the first derivative is decreasing. There is also one more important thing, which is called the inflection point. And basically the inflection point is a point where the function changes its concavity when the second derivative is equal to zero. There is also a tip for those of you who have problems with remembering things. Basically, the graph of function which concaves up, it reminds a cup in its shape, as you can see here. And when you write down the words concave upwards, these highlighted letters create a word cup so it's easy to remember basically so let us start with an easy example we have f of x is equal to x to the fourth power plus four times x cubed plus one from this equation you can see that the domain is all real numbers and now we need to calculate the first derivative so the derivative of x to the fourth power is 4 times x cubed and the derivative from 4x cubed is 3 times 4x squared and the derivative from 1 is equal 0 because 1 is a constant as you all know so now it's time for us to calculate the second derivative so the derivative from 4x cubed is 12x squared as we calculated before and the derivative of 12x squared is 24x so now it's time for us to find the inflection points and we know that the inflection points occur when the second derivative is equal to zero so we write down that 12x squared plus 24 is equal to zero and now we can take 12x before the brackets and inside we will be left with x plus 2 so it means that 12x is equal to 0 and x plus 2 is equal to 0, which gives us that x is equal to 0 and x is equal to, uh, sorry, minus 2. And now we can put these points on the graph. We can see that a is equal to 12, which means that the graph is directed upwards because 12 is positive. And when we look at the graph, we can see that the function is concave up on an interval from minus infinity to minus 2 and from zero, 0 to plus infinity and the function is concave down on an interval from minus 2 to 0. Our second example is y equals natural logarithm of x squared plus 4 plus x minus natural logarithm from 2. So at first we need to determine the domain of the function. We know that this one is always greater than zero, so 
So x squared plus 4 is greater than 0, and we all know that x squared plus 4 is always greater than 0. So it means that the domain is all real numbers. Now we need to find the first derivative of a given function. I will do this now. And after finding the first derivative, we need to find the second one. And now it's time for the inflection points. We know that the inflection point is where the second derivative is equal zero. And we basically write down that eight minus two x squared is equal zero. Now I'm going to calculate it. And from our calculations, we can see that x is equal to 2 and minus 2. So we put both of these numbers on a graph. And from the equation, we can see that a is equal to minus 2, which means that the graph will be directed downwards. And from what you can see on the graph, you can determine that the function is concave up at an interval from minus 2 to 2 and concave down on an interval from minus infinity to minus 2 and from plus 2 to plus infinity. Thank you for your attention. I hope this video will be helpful.